Well, a good morning to you. Welcome to Sunday Best on KTN Home and Big TV. It's good to have you. Um, indeed, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Anthony Diema. And uh, every Sunday morning, we bring you topical conversations. We get to engage on um, things that matter to us and things that matter to you as well. As, as, as pertains to the spiritual man. So Karibu Sana, today we're going to talk about a, a topic that um, has had its fair share of controversy. It is called the supernatural, all right? The supernatural. And I have, of course, uh, the MOG all the way from uh, Mombasa to share with us. It's been a while since we had him. Um, uh, Apostle Judah Atemba. Yes, sir. From Mombasa. Karibu yes, sana mchungaji. Asante sana. Mekua muda? Muda mrefu tangu na wewe utoke Baraka FM. Eh <laughs> <laughs> eh 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 that is a long time ago. Tunapopeza ago. sana ulikuwa Baraka wakati ulipokuwa Mombasa. Eh nilikuwa nimeanza tu career mm -hmm. nimetoka chuoni. Mm -hmm. Bado na tafuta hapa na pale. Uh -huh. Na land kule. A very good launch pad. Uh, labda kabla mm -hmm. tuendele ni na ushuhuda wako. Oh, okay. Kuna ndugu mmoja alisema mlikuwa um, mnalala naye kwa chumba kimoja. Ni Makideo. Makideo. Alipo ni mago Alex Makideo. Yes. 6 by 6. Hey. So umetoka mbali sana. Tumetoka mbali. Nashukuru Mungu ni kielelezo kwa wengi. Tunashukuru. Asante. Kwa imekuwa muda, imekuwa muda. Mm -hmm. Na pia ni vizuri kuona pia watu mm -hmm. wamekuwa kabisa sote tumekuwa mm. tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kabisa Kiswahili akija apotea kabisa Ume, umejitahidi umejitahidi <laughs> <laughs> Chabara akija haribu kabisa Ume, umejitahidi tumejitahidi kabisa Habari Mombasa Mombasa kuko sawa right. Alianga kwa sasa ni mzuri nitawatia moyo wale ambao wanasikia kututembelea Mombasa kwa sasa tutembelee Yes ya, kwa sababu alianga ni mzuri kwa mtu wa huko ingawaje akija bado kwa sababu ya humidity bado atasema kuna joto no. lakini kwetu sisi ni favorable. Okay. Hata duvei na kazi kidogo kwa sasa. Hebu <laughs> <laughs> hapa hivi um, hali anga iko vipi kwa? Kuna sina hisi baridi? <laughs> Niko Marekani. <laughs> <laughs> winter sio? <laughs> ni winter. It is work. Karibu sana asante. Um tunazungumza kuhusu the supernatural. Mm. And um every time mm -hmm. you turn your TV on, yes, please. Or when you're watching something on social media mm -hmm. and you hear of healing the mm -hmm. supernatural, mm -hmm. you know the antennas go up. Yeah. Think, hey, <laughs> hapa, kuna mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I think let's begin by just understanding what is the supernatural. Okay. Mm -hmm. The supernatural. Uh, you can tell us a bit more about it. Yes, so I will explain. Yes. The supernatural is a realm that is beyond the natural. And now it's a God himself is supernatural because when we speak about the supernatural, we are speaking about God. God is the author of the supernatural. It is a realm that is beyond the natural. And, uh, you know, speaking about the natural is, uh, you know, the realm that we live in. And there is a, there's a realm that, uh, uh, you know, whatever happens, happens beyond the natural. Mm. And maybe to explain further, we need to understand that for the supernatural to take effect, there is a process. All right. There is what is entailed. Uh, that is, and speaking about the process, it means that there is a price tag mm -hmm. that is a uh, uh, tag to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. So there is a price tag to it. Mm -hmm. Wow. But I like your definition. Mm -hmm. God is supernatural. Supernatural. Yes. What, you, what do you mean by? It? God is beyond the natural. God is All beyond right. the ordinary. God All is right. not ordinary. Mm -hmm. And that's why a, a singer sang a song and said, "Mungu si mwanadamu." Right. Mungu si mwanadamu aseme uongo. It's also uh, scriptural. Mungu si mwanadamu aseme uongo. Yeah. Jeye amesema atatenda. No. Mm. So so ideally the natural mm -hmm. is what we engage with on yes. a daily basis. Like right now we're engaging naturally. All right. We're in a natural sphere. Mm -hmm. That's why I can be able to see you. Okay. But God is in the supernatural. He is a spirit. John uh -huh. chapter 4 verse 24 I believe. He says God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Right. God is a spirit and that's why we are not seeing him. That's why we, we term him or we call him supernatural. Mm -hmm. And now being a spirit being, there, there are powers that are behind him. And I believe that's what we also need to uh, elaborate on. Right. Because that's a, it's, it's been misconstrued. Mm. When it gets to the, the, the supernatural, uh, there, are, there are those that feel that they're not going to go through the process. Joseph had to take close to uh, 17 or 13 years to get into the palace. Right. David had to be in the bush to be prepared by God before he came out and mm -hmm. became a king. Mm -hmm. He had to be on the run. 
He had to run, you know, because his life was in danger. Until now, the appointed time when now God saw to it that he had to see to it that he's matured enough. Right. Because uh, I, I, can, I can elaborate to explain with the scripture, uh, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, to just sum it up from verse 1 to 7, right. it says, And here, according as he's a child, mm. does not differ from a slave, right. but he's still under guardians and tutors until the time that is appointed by God. When this hair now graduates from being a child, he's gone through the process, he becomes a son. Right. That's when we, when you go down, it says the hair will now begin to cry out, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. Because the hair has now gotten out of, of you know, the state of being under guardians and tutors. He's now a son, and he understands his placement in God. Right. Yes. So let's try and understand a bit of what happens in the supernatural, okay. as, as we just keep, mm -hmm. you know, expanding yes. on that particular definition. Yes. So what happens in the supernatural? In the supernatural, because of the atmosphere, because the supernatural carries an atmosphere. All right. So when, when the supernatural is in a place, and the greatest trigger of the supernatural is holiness. Uh -huh. Because remember, the Bible says, minus holiness, no man will see God. Right. You know, we have got uh, the supernatural in quotes that I know many people are seeing it, and it's, it's manifested over and over again. Mm -hmm. But it's the supernatural, I call it in quotes. And it happens as a result of shortcuts and people that are not willing to pay the price. So the supernatural entails their, their healings, All right. their deliverances, mm -hmm. their supernatural visitations. Uh -huh. When you walk in the, sup in the supernatural because of the spirit, uh, the spirit ability or the spiritual ability of God, then their actions, their acts uh -huh. that back up the supernatural, uh -huh. like healings. Right. You find God settling somebody maritally, mm. or you know, God just changing somebody's situation because of the supernatural. So it goes beyond, and, and I mean, many people mm. when they hear supernatural, they yes. see deliverance uh -huh. and healing. <laughs> no, it but goes, it goes beyond, that. beyond that. There's also knowledge. All right. There's wisdom. Mm -hmm. Because if you read the book of, uh, it should be Isaiah chapter 11, uh, verse 3. It speaks about the spirit of wisdom. It speaks about the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might. It's, it's, it's still part of the supernatural. Right. So it's go, it goes beyond healing and deliverance. Uh -huh. The manifestation of deliverance is just as a result of the presence of God that is evident, uh, backed up by the supernatural. Okay. Mm. So, so what needs to be done mm -hmm. for the supernatural to happen? That's a good question. Yeah. There's a price tag. As I, as I said at the beginning. Yes. And, I, and I like it, you keep mentioning about the price. Yeah, it's good to Very emphasize important. on that because we're uh -huh. living in days whereby we've got so many people that are just shooting up and some of them you try to do a background check and you can't really find out where they're coming from. Mm. And why do you find, you know, why do you find such people is because they don't, they're not ready to pay the price. Now, the, the, um, what, what bats the supernatural is the price. And what do I mean when I speak about the price is there's a, there's, a, there's a call uh, for fasting, uh -huh. there's a call for prayer, and there's a call for the word of God. Right. For instance, you want to move in the prophetic, you might not necessarily need to spend a lot of time in prayer. Prayer will back it up. Mm -hmm. But what stirs up the prophetic is the word of God. All right. After you prayed, you need to balance it with the word of God. God's servant, Bishop David Odepo said, if I fast and I don't read the word of God or pray, then it, it's equated to hunger strike. Mm. Mm. So what about the supernatural is a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Right. And that also calls for consecration and separation. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, so, so let's paint a picture. Mm -hmm. Let's paint a picture of uh, someone who desires mm. the supernatural to happen in their lives. Okay. Let's say uh, you have been under a condition mm. that has um, put you down. Mm -hmm. And you're, it could be a marital issue. Mm. It could be healing that you desire. Yes. What do you need to do? Okay. Uh, and I'll go far beyond the, that. Yes. And I'll also try to bring on board people that are, you know, having maladies or sicknesses that are incurable. Right. Because someone that has got ulcers yeah. has been told, and according to the ulcetic condition, they might not be able to fast. Mm. So there's also, there's a need for desperation. Right. There's a need for a hunger and a thirst for a change. Uh -huh. Because you can also go into like fasting. That. You can go on the mountains and fast and pray for as many days as you want. But if there is no desire, and that is backed up with a hunger and a desperation for a change. So, the, so that's the beginning point. That's the beginning point. There has to be a desire. There should be a desire. desire. I'm, I'm tired of this condition in my marriage. Right. We are fighting with my wife or my husband every day. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I need a change. Then I begin to involve God. Then fasting will come on. It will just come on board automatically. All right. But, you know, like when, as, as, a, 
as a, as as compared to or, or rather as a, when, when, when a bring on board people that have got maladies that are incurable mm -hmm. like uh, ulcers and all that their own will just need the supernatural to be involved after their desperation mm -hmm. their hunger and thirst the bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness right. for they shall be filled uh -huh. mm. all right so so that's a good beginning point mm. you have to desire yes you have to hunger for it. Mm. So how do we now engage the next step okay. as you get to us? Now that is now, that calls for faith. All right. Because Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I, al I, I always uh, uh, interpret faith as the living word or rather living force drawn from the living word to produce living proofs. So you read the word of God. Or, or you can hear the word of God as we are sharing this morning. Right. You hear the word of God, then faith is generated. Mm -hmm. As that faith is generated, you find one that was weak and feeble begins to take steps. All right. You know, like a little child, whether they will try and crawl and fall down, you just take steps because you are tired. You are, you're, you know, you are hungry with that present situation. So you begin to take steps. You get out of that con confinement and you say, I need to see a, a difference. It's just like when you, you wanted to get out of your house this morning, mm -hmm. you have to brush your teeth, right. you have to shower and just prepare yourself and make sure you are presentable. Uh -huh. That is the same way you have to see to it that faith is in place. Right. And as I said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's mm -hmm. right. I, mm -hmm. I like the element of faith. Mm -hmm. So we have seen instances where um, mm -hmm. you have a hunger. Okay. You have, uh, of course, gotten into the word because that's how you felt the faith is built. Yes. Do you, do you have to go to where things are happening? Or can I engage my faith with where I am? And what would be the difference? Like? There is no barrier in the realm of the spirit. All right. God is a spirit. And there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Uh -huh. I've had a privilege to minister to people who are outside the country. Right. And even on phone, by faith I prayed with them. Mm -hmm. And God ministered to them oh. in a faraway country. So there's no barrier in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Inside your house, God can meet you at your point of need. Right. In your office, on the road as you're driving, mm -hmm. God can meet you at your point of need. Right. There's no barrier. We, we've, we've seen incidences. Mm -hmm. and you are here today on your own sport. Eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need to clarify a few things that mm -hmm. are very, very important when it comes to the supernatural. Okay. We have seen instances where people have to do everything mm -hmm. to make sure that they go to where a meeting is mm -hmm. that is happening mm -hmm. is that also a, a sign of faith for them does their faith get to the next level mm -hmm. by heading to that meeting faith is in levels right and as i said god you know god is not uh, limited by distance mm -hmm. and there are people i've had testimonies People, a man or woman was watching a program online right. and God visited them. Being in an atmosphere or, or an arena of uh, the supernatural is good, mm -hmm. but God is not limited to that. There are people, for instance, they're in a condition whereby they are not in a position to be in the meeting, yes. in the arena of the supernatural. Right. So wherever they are, even in the loo, God can visit somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I like the, the, the story of the woman with the issue of mm -hmm. You know, she yes. was there, she knew uh -huh. this is my opportunity, yes. my chance. Mm -hmm. But because she could not get yes. to where, you know, Christ himself was, yes. she knew one thing. Mm -hmm. If I only touch yes, the hem of the his hem garment, of his garment mm. then I will receive. And Christ said, you know what? Mm -hmm. Something has come out of me. Mm. Someone has uh, touched me. Touched me. Yes. And uh, she had to come out and, mm -hmm. and receive. So, so I, again, it's just to encourage those who are, those who are watching yes. and to tell them that. Uh, it can happen anywhere. It, yeah, it can happen anywhere. Uh, very important, mm. rather most important, mm -hmm. is that your faith yes. needs to be charged up. That's true. How do you get to a point where mm. you have such intense faith, mm -hmm. faith that is not shakable, okay. faith that is uh, firm mm -hmm. for the supernatural to happen? It takes a walk with God. All it right. should be a daily walk because every one of us is discouraged at one point or the other. So it takes a daily walk with God. And after you've been consciously walking with God and doing what is uh, demanded of you, for instance, the, the study of the Word of God, mm -hmm. because that's the greatest catalyst of faith, the study of the Word of God and prayer. Because as I said, these two go in hand in hand. Right. Because uh, the Bible says in the book of James that faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So you have to see to it that you are exposed to the study of the word of God. Then you will grow in levels. 
And then you'll find yourself getting to a place whereby, you know, the supernatural becomes part and parcel of your life mm -hmm. because you have grown and you have matured in the things of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have seen instances, and um, this is the controversial one, mm -hmm. where um, people have gone to places, mm -hmm. but they have ended up running to false prophets. Mm -hmm. Do we have false prophets today? Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. It is a fulfillment yes. of scriptures. Yes. The Lord himself spoke in Matthew 24, I believe it should be verse 24. Mm -hmm. He says, false Christ and false, uh, false prophets will come and they will deceive many. Right. And he said, if it could have been possible, they would even deceive the very elect. Wow. So it is scriptural. First John chapter 4, if you read it from verse 1 going down, down to verse 4, uh, the, the Bible uh, speaking says, uh, be, be, beware or, you know, watch out. Because false Christ and false prophets will rise in the last days. Mm -hmm. And the, it says, by this you'll be able to know the spirit of those that are coming in the name of the Lord. Right. They'll confess that Christ has come in the flesh. He said, the spirit of the Antichrist does not confess that Christ has come in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So it's indeed true that we're living in days whereby we've got false prophets. Right. They are there. And a lot of people have been duped mm -hmm. in the process. It's true. The Bible says you will know them mm -hmm. by, by their, their fruits. fruits. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have, you have been a minister. Yes, please. Um, is that distinction the best in terms of knowing this is a genuine <laughs> prophet, this mm. is a genuine um, you know, man of God, mm. this is not a genuine one? How do you mm -hmm. draw the line? Now, drawing the line is, uh, demands for discernment. Yeah. Among the gifts of the Spirit. That's a big word. Yes. Among the gifts Break of the Spirit is discernment. <laughs> yes. Discernment is the ability to tell. Okay. My, my heart, you know, God communicates in so many ways. God can impress on your heart. When you meet somebody, you just feel like you're repelling the person. Mm. You're repelling the person. Uh, we usually say, Kuna kitu tu. Mm, kuna kitu ina kuskuma tu, tu nasikia tu, ndiyama. Eh, <laughs> ndiyama kuna kitu tu, sitaki ukakaribne. Yes. God is communicating. All right. You know, so God communicates in levels. Uh -huh. And there's a level where you, whereby you get to, you meet with the wrong person, and you will just hear the voice clearly telling you, this is not the right person. Mm. Don't associate with him. So we grow slowly by slowly. All right. Mm. So there is a, uh, I mean, the, the discernment. Yes. Ephesians 1.18 says that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Right. So you walk with God and your eyes of understanding are opened. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to know when you, you can go into a meeting and you know God is not here. Right. Despite the happenings, the occurrences, God is not here. It's just a fanfare. Right. It's hula baloo. Yeah. Mm. Does uh, the devil also has fanfare? He has. <laughs> if you read How the book is that of, manifested? If you read the book of Revelation, it should be Revelation 16, 13, if I'm not wrong. It says he, he has given to the beast and to the false prophet and to the serpent of old powers to perform miracles. Mm. And then he says he saw an, 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 a three unclean spirits. Three unclean spirits coming out of the mouth of the beast, the false prophet, and the, 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 that serpent of old. And then he says that they have been given power to call down fire. Right. Yeah. Wow. They have power to call down fire. That's why we need to draw a line by trusting God to open our eyes of understanding mm. so that you are not just carried away by any manifestation that you see. Wow. Because there are also manifestations that are demonic. Right. And many have been deceived as a result of their... Because one of the weapons that the devil uses is blindfold. Wow. He blind... If he wants to deceive somebody, he blindfolds them. Right. And he makes sure that you, you now become very resistant to the truth. That even if a genuine person comes and tells you the, the road or the path you've taken is wrong, you'll you be can't. like, in fact, you begin to hate that person. Right. Mm. Wow. What, what are some of the signs mm -hmm. when you see, you mm -hmm. clearly say, right here, mm -hmm. there is a problem. Okay. In terms of uh, in your interaction with them, yeah. you know, yeah. the ministers or the man of God or mm -hmm. the prophet. Yeah, the litmus paper is the word of God. Right. The litmus paper, the balance. What brings in the, the balance is the word of God. Right. And that's why I always advocate that every believer should read the word of God. Ah, because when you read the word of God, that's when now uh, Matthew 7, 21 and 22, it says, many will come to me saying, I, I healed the sick. Mm. I delivered many men and women, you know. Right. I prophesied in your name, but he will tell them, depart from me because I do not know you. Mm -hmm. And he says, you workers of iniquity. Right. So what uh, makes you to be able to tell uh, that this is not of God is you have to have the word of God and uh, what will make you to now identify is the errors mm. because there is balance in the word of God right. and when you read the word of God you'll be able to understand that if for instance I begin to merchandise a gift that I've been given 
then you know that this is an error. Because the, the word of God says we have been given freely, and freely we should give. Right. So if I begin to merchandise, and I begin to say, if I'm going to pray for you to get healed, then you need to bring me 100,000, yes. then you know there's an error. Wow. Jesus never, never charged anybody to be healed nor delivered. Mm. So any sound man of God is, uh, should be ready to release what they carry freely. Right. And God will, in, 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 in return, reward them in his own way. But you know, also, that's where manipulation comes mm. in. Because uh, you you will be told mm. it is a way of honor. Mm -hmm. So you need to honor mm. the gifting. Mm -hmm. So wh where is the difference between honoring mm -hmm. and the clearly mm. seeing that manipulation is happening here? Now, I take you, I take you back to uh, Hosea 4 6. Yes. He says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's true. And uh, the New Living Translation says, My people are destroyed because they do not know me. Mm. He says, Even the priests do not know me. The King James Version says, The priests have rejected me. They have rejected knowledge. Right. That's true. <laughs> now, when we lack knowledge, that's when we are manipulated. Mm. But a knowledgeable believer, because we have a personal responsibility. Every believer, after you've gotten born again, you have a personal responsibility to pray and study the word of God. Right. But now when you don't pray and study the word of God, then you're taken for granted. Mm. Uh, you know, a man or woman will just come up with a doctrine because it has to go with the, the true doctrine. They just come up with a doctrine and you listen to that doctrine. And that's why Paul admonishing the, the, the church. He said, do not be carried away or do, do not be tossed to and fro by any manner of wind of doctrine. That's true. So it has to be based on a sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's important. I, I, I remember uh, someone by now Bishop mm. Kalisto Dede, mm -hmm. some time back when he was talking about occults, cults and occults, mm. and, and, and false prophets. Mm -hmm. He said, when you get to a point where the man of God or the minister has been raised to a level mm. That uh, he's almost comparable That's idolatry. to yes to Jesus. Mm, it's idolatry. That's a sign. Mm. Sign number one. Yeah. That th there is something mm. is happening and mm. that is not true. Is that true? Yeah, because Jesus, you know, idolatry and witchcraft uh, is in different levels. Right. And I can say this uh, that uh, we also have places of worship that witchcraft is practiced. Ah. Because now, for instance. When I begin to pray against you, mm. when you I begin jowl. to curse you, yes. I have gotten into a dimension <laughs> of spiritual witchcraft. Right. A believer is praying against an, an, another believer yeah. because our warfare is not carnal, it is That's spiritual. True. So if I, if I as a believer begin to fast and pray that Ndiyama should die, right. I have gotten into a dimension of spiritual witchcraft. Mm. That's very interesting. And, and the error should be corrected by us priests. When we see those excesses, yeah. we should be able to say, no, this should not go on. And it's not my role to, mm -hmm. to, to, to revenge, right? It's not your role to revenge. It's God's role. I think I'm a person who has many... Kanyaga kabisa. I'm a boss who has many... No, we should <laughs> handle the diabolic. <laughs> we right. should handle the, the diabolic. Mm. And we should not now become witches in, in, in places of worship. Right. No. Wow. Mm. Uh, that's very profound. Mm. So, so, so ideally... We need to be very, very careful. There's a very thin line. Right. You can get into witchcraft without your knowledge. Mm. You can, allow me to say this, you can, you, can, you can still be speaking in tongues, yet you went into witchcraft. Mm. Because the moment you begin to curse people, especially God's people, you're in, you're in for a problem. Is it possible mm -hmm. for a man of God who has fallen, mm from uh, grace, grace mm -hmm. to still then do the supernatural. It is possible. Supernatural. It, is, it is scriptural. The scripture says the gifts of God are without repentance. Right. So what God does because he endured his grace in him, or God invested in him or her, what God does now after he's not seen repentance for some time, mm. he decides, let me take away this minister. Wow. So that's the That's end. why you see a, a minister that was well doing, Mm -hmm. God can just decide, let me take him away, because God will say, let me save his soul. And, and most of the time it begins, I mean, we've seen people who have, have begun well. Mm -hmm. What happens? What happens? Along the way we forget. Along the way. If yeah. you read the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord speaking to his, his people, he told them, after you have eaten and you are full, do not forget you are coming from. You realize that uh, human beings tend to forget very easily. Mm -hmm. I believe there are people that you have helped. 
right. in this path of destiny. And you realize there are those that came back. You see those uh, nine or uh, ten lepers. One of them came back and said, thank you. But there are those that will, shall, still, will go out there and say, Ndiyama, that <laughs> Ndiyama <laughs> guy yeah, is bad. <laughs> they go and tarnish you. And yet you fed them. Right. You paid school fees for them. Right. You housed them, you know. Mm. So there are those that will still respect you till the end of the age. Mm -hmm. And there are those that will still feel like, you know, something is amiss. All right. Mm. So we take a short break. We'll be coming back with uh, the man of God right here. Talking about many things supernatural. Uh, trying to understand you know, how do I get in there? Uh, how does it happen? Is it a reality? How do I need to engage? What needs to be the condition of my heart for the supernatural to happen? And for you who's just getting in and you're wondering, does it even happen? Is it even possible? <laughs> so we have the answers for you and we'll get to engage. We'll also be getting to know um, a servant of God who will be coming over uh, very soon in, in the city. So don't go too far. We are the Cascadia Gardens Apartments. Cascadia Apartments. The Two Rivers Mall, beautiful, simple. You love it. Go check it out. We come back in a short while right here. Don't go too far.